Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff and Hugh McDonald are here with me and thank you to you for joining us on the Football Show, whether it be on YouTube or indeed watching it on the app or as many people have stopped us to say they enjoy listening to it as a podcast. Um, sometimes you just got to go out for a walk, Ruffy, and uh, have a wee listen, download the podcast and have a wee listen and then worry about people who are looking at you as you start laughing uh, walking around the park. Yeah, more and more people doing that now, aren't they? As the years go on, it seems to be the thing. You know, people walking about with the iPods in. Mm. Yeah, strange that actually, because maybe 30, 40 years ago, Rafi, if you walked past somebody who was ch chatting away to themselves, you'd think, hmm, we could be in trouble here. He's going. Actually, do that now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's going <quite> scary. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, we are getting uh, lots of people who are enjoying our unique video content, and if you. Join us on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button. It is, of course, uncensored, unbiased, unmatched. It's absolutely free to watch seven days a week. But uh, some of the programmes that we have on a regular basis, Monday to Friday, 4 o'clock till 5, is the football show. We've got one-to-ones, dream teams, lots of content there for you. And on a Saturday now, uh, it's Tam McManus and myself giving you all the half-time and full-time results with the reporters bringing you managers and players' reaction as well. So hopefully you're enjoying our content. You're certainly enjoying the competition because Mark Vogan has uh, won the Luka Modric replica Champions League shirt. Um, we were hoping that uh, maybe someone would go up and present it to him, mm -hmm. but Evington in Russia is just oh, is a wee is? bit too uh, far away. Aye, yeah, Evington in Russia someplace. Aye, what a beautiful place to stay. Aye. Have you been there? Aye, I've been up in Russia. Aye. Aye, oh, I, I, are, I, I used to... Um, uh, I used to take the my my uh, maternal grandparents came from Thurzo and Wick, so wow. a few years ago I used to do we jaunts up to Thurland. That's that. why he's here. That's why he's here because he knows all these things. Anyway, if you want to win the competition, it's a belter if you're a Rangers or Celtic fan. And here's Kerry with the details. This is your chance to win one of these fantastic books that looks back at the classic shirts throughout both clubs' history. You can read about your favourite shirt and your favourite season as a Celtic or Rangers supporter. To be in with a chance of winning, all you have to do is tell us which book you would like to win in the comment section below. And to double your chances of winning, hit the subscribe button and join us on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Good luck! Yeah, good luck with the competition. Uh, there's a lot of people entering it. Some want the Rangers book, some want the Celtic book. We had somebody yesterday who says, I'm quite greedy, can I have the both of them? <laughs> um, which is a big it's a big no-no, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, well worth it. Uh, what about the quiz? We always like to test your brain on what's happening uh, in the football world, and this one's very pertinent. Uh, what trophy is the only one Lionel Messi has competed for and not one. I know that. Uh, so don't tell us. You will t Hugh can tell us at the end of the program. Um, and you know. also, uh, there's a lot of people uh, who are saying hello to us. Hi to everyone who's joined us. Uh, Bob Miller, lots of people. Niall, Johnny, Paul Baird, Gregor, uh, and Errol. There's uh, so many people joining us on the program uh, on a regular basis for the live show. And then there are some who watch it at their leisure later on. Louise uh, does. Louise watches her later on, so yeah, shout out to sure. Louise. What about Louise? Louise. Right. Louise who works at Partick Thistle. Oh, well, I was speaking to Louise on Tuesday there. Yeah. Yeah. She, 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 she tells me, she says she, she watches it after the at five o'clock, gives yeah. her a wee break from the arduous duties of counting up the Thistle Dosh. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly enough, by the way, I was going to say to you, that competition for the two books, have you had a look at the strips in it? Aye. It's and fantastic, it, isn't it? What a labour of love that is as well. It's... It, it, and, and when you look through the, this history of the strips, and the great thing is, like strips are like pop songs, Peter. Like if yeah. you if you suddenly see them or hear them in the case of pop songs, they bring back years as you go by. Oh, I remember that yeah. strip. Uh, uh, I remember that. Oh, it's them. a like, season. It's, it's a, a player. player it's a goal. Your generation, isn't it? Uh, yeah. and there's some some strips that you you link automatically with certain players. Yeah, absolutely. The ones, um, the ones in the fifties and sixties, they haven't put a lot of effort into them. No, no, but th then <laughs> just, again, it's um, the colour we a badge. Uh, exactly, and I think it wasn't really a thing then. It was poverty more than anything uh -huh. else for a lot of people, um, and buying strips was not high on the agenda. Um, and with that in mind, uh, the, the Celtic uh, book took uh, Paul John Dykes uh, seven years. You just have to look at it and you say, 
right, I know where the seven years went. Yeah, absolutely. And Kerry, uh, a reporter, Kerry Pollock, caught up with him. And that goes out tomorrow at nine o'clock on YouTube uh, just to see how difficult it is to put a book of that stature out. Uh, interestingly enough, the other one was written by David Graham, who used to be the PR guy at Rangers. Yep. He's now gone to Linfield. Absolutely. So it's mightily difficult for me to go over there. I was going to go over for the Kyle Lafferty the signing, unveiling. but I thought against it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you had to end up. Did you with any jail cell for as well? I got into the press conference, just wouldn't have been able to ask a question. Um, but um, he was going to end up somewhere, so he's going to finish his career over in Northern Ireland. Yeah, Linfield and uh, and not uh, uh, not shall we say unexpected. A pretty predictable course, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, so good luck with the question. Um, we'll provide you with the answer uh, later on. We'll also give you another chance to look at the competition as well and enter it. Thank you to so many of you who are subscribing to our YouTube channel and lots of people are saying to Ruffy, they're downloading the app because you have everything at your fingertips. Video content, you can interact, you can send us messages and you get all the breaking football news. So with that in mind, let's cut to the news. David Martindale, um, well, he's been speaking today about VAR. Uh, I don't think Livy's are gonna use it in the Scottish Cup and Kerry Pollock was there to find out why. Here at Livingston today, David Martindale is preparing his players to take on Inverness in the fifth round of the Scottish Cup this Saturday. The Livy boss has made it no secret that he wants his side to do better when it comes to cup competitions. I think he touched on it. Well, I have. I've touched on it slightly. I've been very vocal in the respect that um, I want to do better in the Scottish Cup, for me as an individual, but definitely Livingston as a collective. So, very vocal on that if we can get through this tie. Um, you're one away from Hamden, which is where everybody wants to be playing football. We were luckily enough to get to a cup final at Hamden, a semi final at Hamden previously, but that was during COVID times and we never got to experience that with our families, our friends, and the fans. So um, it would be incredible to do that with fans allowed into the stadium, but that doesn't, I'm not underestimating the task in front of us on Saturday. One thing the Levy boss hasn't been shy on sharing his opinion on is VAR and for financial reasons the club have made the decision not to implement it this weekend. I think if it's going to cost you, like we are, again, we are close to six figures to implement VAR this year. These six figures, where does it come from? It comes out my budget, there's no, other, there's no other revenue stream that can come out, so it comes out my budget, so that's going to make me less competitive going into the season. So. I don't see the point in spending more money to make me even less competitive for a game of football. Let, let's be honest, well, how many years has football been going on? Hundreds of years we've got away without VAR, so I'm sure for the Scottish Cup game on Saturday we'll be OK. OK, he's obviously uh, checked to see if he could get away with that and the validity of saying I'm not using VAR. Um, there's definitely a loophole there at the moment. Should it be shut? No, I think you should. I think they should be given the option. I think it's the semi-finals and the finals have to be VAR. You know that's in the rules. You can tell a lot of the clubs are feeling a pinch financially. He's explained it quite well there. Everything that goes towards it comes out of his budget, and when you've got a limited budget as he has, he has to safeguard every money he can get. You know, so he'll just be hoping that doesn't come back to bite him because nine times out of ten there is a VAR decision at a football game now, whether you like it or you you don't, and you'll be hoping it's not against you. Ten thousand pounds a game is is a lot of money. Right, oh, absolutely. My problem with it is, and you know, I, I'm not a VAR fan, never have been, but it's here, so there's no, you just got to make it work better rather than abolish it. But I reckon that in the tournament, it was always the case in football, if anything never came into football, they said, well, we can't have that there because we can't have it at Annan or Auchin Lake or uh, we can't have it, you know, wherever. So football's got to be a level playing ground. And I believe in this competition, if it's not everywhere, it should be nowhere. It's as simple as that. I don't think you can pick and choose when you use VAR because you're really changing the way the game is run from one ground to another. Uh, and, and, you know, you could look at it, there'll be a case and it'll come up at one time that somebody saying, will say after the decision, I wish we'd been drawn and to play at home because uh, we've just been knocked out of the cup because of VAR in one way or another, you know what I mean? A VAR decision has... has it. So I, I just think if, it, if a competition's here and it's not available on every ground, I understand why it will not be available on every ground. It's not available any ground. Ruffy? No, I think it should be, you know, uh, it's up to 
the individual clubs, you know, and I'm just wondering if it's a Scottish Cup, does that mean that if it's 10,000 they have to share it? Mm -hmm. Because it's a 50-50 it's right. a, it's a split, so although Livingston's saying we're not paying 10,000, does it mean the other team have got to share the 10,000 with them if they want it? So it's got to be, you know, a collective and a decision. I just, as I said there, I, I just hope it doesn't come back to bite anybody. Yeah, well, though, I mean, well, as sure as as sure as anything, I mean, it's, it's, there's going to be decisions at the weekend and say, and you know, sports scene or whatever uh, uh, television. Because I said, oh, look at that, that was definitely over the line. But there's no far. Now that's all right if it's every ground. That's life. Yeah. It's only Celtic and Rangers this weekend. That's what I'm saying. But it's. Um, uh, and do and do you think that that VAR does VAR uh, does does VAR favour the stronger side as well? You know, because there are more decisions in the opposite penalty box, etc., etc. I don't know. It'd have to be studied that, but, but that would be my view everywhere or nowhere. Yeah, um, it, it's going to be difficult to have it everywhere or nowhere. Um, I think as we've highlighted with the financial aspects of it. Although, Ruffy, if we had. I don't want to, should I go down this road by just having a, a real go and leathering everybody again? If we had a situation where the Scottish Premiership could all actually be uh, fighting in the one direction as a collective rather than their own self-interest, we could have bigger sponsors, more money in, different types of sponsors to cinch as well. Mm -hmm. Cinch, yes, take their money, thank you, mm -hmm. and try and appeal, you know, try and go with them mm -hmm. um, in what they need. And then another big sponsor for something else. You could have a sponsor for VAR mm -hmm. that could have offset the costs. You could be really embracing that whole American blueprint mm -hmm. of you know, let's forget about just one main sponsor. You can have four or five doing different things. You would have, you would have to have a VAR sponsor because see if you had a general sponsor a lot of clubs just don't want VAR and won't spend money on VAR. For example, David, yeah. Yeah, David, David will look at 10 grand and say, 10 grand, well, 10, in one game, 10 grand is maybe 10 weeks of a, well, will be, yeah. 10, you know, a fifth of a season for a good striker for me. Yeah. No, I get that, but but yeah. if 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 they if they promoted the game in such a way that they were all collectively going in the same direction, uh, they would be in a stronger they would be a stronger position, and it wouldn't be. And remember, the last couple of years, it's only in the last couple of years that they've managed to get Cinch as a major mm. sponsor, and even then, yeah, well, that, we all know the debacle that's well, unfolded that, with that, that. That would be happened. Okay, if we got a sponsor for VAR. I don't, know, I don't know who it would be, but say we got a, a sponsor then, it's got to go to a vote. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then we've already seen Dundee United and Livingston don't want to use it. So yeah. that vote's not going to get passed, mm. depending on who the sponsor is. Well, um, I have to say it's uh, it's it's one of those things where I, I think slowly but surely you'll get the odd dissenter, but eventually I think it will be compulsory, mm. um, you know, as it is in the, the, the league at the moment. Um, I think eventually it will be. As I say... I can understand people not having like Darvel, et cetera, et cetera, and teams in League Two, all of our things, but uh, it does create an uneven playing field, and that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, uh, the Scottish Cup fixtures, uh, I just wonder um, if there's um, a potential shock in there. We're going to hear from some of the managers and players involved, but here are the fixtures for the weekend for you to look forward to on <coughs> Friday. Um, which is tomorrow, Hamilton Ackies against Hearts, then on the Saturday, Air United Elgin, Dundee United against Kilmarnock, Livingston Inverness, Wraith Rovers against Motherwell, Celtic against St Mirren, and then on the Sunday, it's Rangers against Partick Thistle, on the Monday, it's Darvel against Falkirk. Mm. So there you have it, some tasty ties there, and uh, I just wonder if there's a, a few cup shocks in there that you think uh, there's a team that's going to be heading out. Uh, give us your thoughts on that ahead of the weekend Scottish Cup ties. Um, it's always good to get your thoughts on it, and we'll offer you our opinion as well. So what do you think of David Martindale and the whole debacle over VAR this weekend? Um, Kelly against Dundee United. Um, well, Derek McInnes wasn't speaking today. Tony Doherty had to come in as his replacement, and Kerry was heading down uh, the motorway to get his thoughts at Rugby Park. Today, Kelly assistant Tony Doherty spoke to the media ahead of Kilmarnock's Scottish Cup clash with Dundee United, a team who they're very familiar with when it comes to cup competitions. But to get themselves to another quarter-final, the Ayrshire side will have to be at their absolute best this weekend. Since we've been here, we seem to draw Dundee United a lot in the Cups. You know, last year when we were a championship team, they put us out an extra time in the Scottish Cup. This year, we defeated them out there and to get to a semi-final, and now here we go. So I suppose it's one each. 
So they'll see this as an opportunity as well, a great opportunity to get their season going and get to a semi-final. They've got good players, they've got good players at Dundee United, a good squad of players. We need to be our best. You know, as you say, recently we've just played them. Our performance level was good enough to win that game. If we can replicate that, hopefully we'll be the ones sitting in a quarter-final. Killies away from this season hasn't been the best. Their last away win was at Tynecastle in August against Hearts, but Doherty believes that they can use that as motivation on Saturday. There's so many ways to win a game in the Premier League, but motivation is the biggest thing. You know, and, and as I say, the, the cup competition can provide that shot in the arm. So we're away for league business, as I said, I think the captain said earlier on we would prefer to be getting into league business, you know, just to deal. Because this team react well to disappointment, you know, they do react well to adversity. But it's now the cup competition and again we draw on our experiences from previous uh, getting to the semi-final, take the positive from that and use it as a motivational tool. It's always nice to get a wee financial boost mm -hmm. as well, Ruffy. Yeah, and if you're struggling like they are in the league, you know, it takes away the pressures of that. And if you were to get a win, you move closer to, to getting to Hamden, and that always gives the supporters and the players a bit of a buzz. Mm -hmm. But uh, their away form is just diabolical, you know, that uh, I don't think it'll make any difference. It's been a Scottish Cup game, they've still got to go up there and they've got to try and mm -hmm. do what they haven't been doing, you know, and they have been getting beat quite easily away from home. And let's say they've only won one about? game. Kelly. Kelly, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Oh, sorry, is it? Yeah. Well, well, I've got a chance then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years. Ten years. It's just fantastic. It didn't be United to be fair. To, to be fair, Tony Docker did talk a lot about their away form. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> you um, suck them down. But uh, I, I don't know. But listen, um, <laughs> <laughs> he's not real, isn't he? You know. Thanks um, for said Dundee United versus Kilmarnock in the yeah, we'll Scottish Cup tie. We'll, we'll, we'll switch that we'll, tie we'll switch it for you, yeah. by the way. Um, but as far as Dundee United are concerned, um, Liam Fox was speaking uh, today because quite simply their forum um, is not sufficient enough to get them away from the bottom end of the league. Um, and he's not looking at this as some kind of welcome break. It's a welcome break because I don't, I don't sense that from the players and I, I certainly don't. Um, I'm not looking at the league fixtures like, I'm not, I don't get that feeling from the players or from myself or my staff. We know where we are, we know where we need to get to, we know the challenges that are ahead, we know that we've got a lot of big games coming up, and this is just another big game. Is it done, United? <laughs> oh, brilliant, Ruffy. It's fantastic. I just love playing with you in this mind game. Brilliant. Anyway, <clears throat> who do you think is going to win it, Ruffy? Dundee United. <laughs> I think the United are only winning games, but yeah. I think they've got the players oh. that can up their game. I think uh, <coughs> they look as if they can get themselves out of the trouble. They will see this game as getting away from the pressures. Uh, yeah. they're at home as well. Is he under pressure? Uh, at home. <laughs> <laughs> is he under pressure if they lose? No. No, I don't think so. No? No, because, I mean, it's a Premier League team they're playing. You know, if it had been a smaller club, you know, then, yeah, I think the fans would mm. possibly react to that. The fans as well seem to be more direct in their anger towards Tony Ashgar as well, rather yeah. than the manager. Is that body. warranted? Well, uh, I think, listen, I, I, I'm very loath to criticise fans for, for, for protesting because they know more about the situation than any pundit or any commentator. And they pay their money and they're very much entitled to, uh, uh, to, to complain about what's going on. The big problem, I think, with Dundee United is not that no money has been spent, as the money's been spent the wrong way. There's a lot of people at, at, at Dundee, Dundee United, put their hands into their pockets yeah. and, and, and paid for it. It's not the, the volume of, of what they've done, it's the quality, I think, it, 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 that's what's happened. And I think fans would tell you that, that you know, some of the the quality of what they brought in has not been good enough given the money they put out. Yeah, I mean, it's a big budget. And when you consider the budget elsewhere, I mean, we always go on about the fact that David Martindale's league position is embarrassing mm -hmm. most managers and clubs. But Dundee United, when you consider the money that they've been shelling out, Stephen Fletcher doesn't come cheap, mm -hmm. even though he's at the no. end of his career. No, I know Tony Ashgar has come out and said, look, we did our best to bring people in. You know, but it, it just never happened. I, I, I don't know what's happened at Dundee United. I'm hazarding a guess. Their budget's been spent. Somebody somewhere has said, right, you've had your whack. Mm. You know, we, if you're letting, you need to 
let somebody go to bring somebody in and they've left it too late but I think this is more of a financial thing because we've, we've seen all the, the Premier Clubs we've seen Aberdeen mm. posting losses we've seen St Myrne posting losses and I don't think Dundee United would be any different mm. for anybody else so th there is a stage where you say right you just have to go on with what you've got Yeah, if anything Hugh I'm, I'm looking at Dundee United if they were to lose this this weekend um, you know you're looking at a team that are on the bottom end they've mm. got an inexperienced manager mm. Um, trying to get them out of, uh, you know, the the mire in that bottom end. Yeah, but the, the thing is, what, you see, what is the alternatives for them? Because it's a very pragmatic thing. It's why clubs at this stage will be seen, they know if they get, probably not in the case of Liam Fox, but certainly with Aberdeen, maybe with Jim Goodwin, they know they've, take, they've got to pay to get, you know, pay heavily to get somebody out. Yeah. And they say, well, who are we going to get in? Um, I think Liam Fox is under pressure, like all managers are, I think he's under pressure, but I don't think he's in imminent danger at the moment. But you've got to remember, at the bottom of this league, and Ruffy knows it as well, with the Partick Thistle experience, he'll, he'll be able to uh, tell you precisely, if you leave this league to go down, it's a lot of money you lose, a lot of money you lose. And if you're tied to contracts and you're, you lose sponsors, I mean, it's a big, big blow. And it's also followed by the fact that see if you go down, you're not guaranteed to come back up either. Uh, uh, so there'll be a lot of pressure exerted, I think, at clubs like Motherwell, Kilmarnock and Dundee United, who I think are the, the three most... Vulnerable, vulnerable yeah. I would say. Yeah. Um, I know others are in it, but that would be the three that I would think are in it. Yeah, and you mentioned Motherwell there. They are the one team that I think, it's not a, it wouldn't be a cup shock, Wraith Rovers knocking them out, but I think Wraith Rovers will knock them out. You reckon so? I think, oh, I think Motherwell are woeful at the moment. Uh, woeful. Yep. They uh, cannot, they can't string passes together. They were so bad in midweek. Mm. I mean, I was sitting there thinking, surely there's a spark somewhere. Mm. But I didn't see it. The thing about the interesting thing about Wraith Rovers is you think, well, what would um, the result of a night there do for them? You know, getting through in a Challenge Cup, that'll lift them motivationally. But does that maybe tire them a bit? Do they go in a bit more, you know, tired into this match? Yeah, because you would look, there's a big target on Motherwell at the moment, and, yeah. and certainly Wraith Rovers are not going into that game, uh, you know, feeling in any way underdogs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, well, of the other ties, I mean, we did mention there Celtic against St Mirren uh, is the one on the Saturday um, that Stephen Robinson has to try and somehow provide a cup shock against a side that just keep motoring on. Eventually, they've let one striker go in Georgios Giacomakis. He's off to Atlanta uh, and uh, it was always on the cars, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. I think these things were going on behind the scenes. And I think I said it last week, I said uh, Celtic have completely changed the way they, they operate their transfer uh, window now. They, there was, he wasn't going anywhere till it suited Celtic. Mm, yeah. You know, the, he was start, mm. thought he was going to dictate, mm. I might go there or I might go there. And Celtic have just went, no, mm. this is where you're going. Yeah. You know, we'll tell you where you're going, you know. So they made a bit of money out of it, though. But yeah, it, they made it, a couple it, have, of they left, have they left themselves short with them? Uh, so, I think we're getting Hohen, Owen. Uh, uh, Owen, sorry, I think, uh, and, and Kyogo, that's enough because he can go, can go Maida as a, as a, as a number three yeah. in a push. No, I think the problem all right. I think that I would love to know the full unexpurgated story behind this, but it certainly seems to me about a very much a Postal Coglu you know, laying down a marker. You know, the stories about the way Jack and Mac is, you know, Felt about the lack of play time, felt about opportunities other way wise, and I think the last not privy to the deal either. Not it could privy have been one of those ones where they said, "You're on this. Dis if you if score you this, dis I mean, look at his stats, Hugh. I mean, he can go leave well, with his head held high. Absolutely, and I think he was an absolutely crucial player for for Celtic in the second half of the season. Give him up a goal every two games. Yeah, um, and, and you look and at the very money. hugely important goals. Yeah, um, um, he never stinted on the part because. You never felt when he was on the park watching them that he was dialing it in. He was yep. passionate, he was aggressive. He gave his all. And he gave and he was a great scorer of late goals. No, I just think there's obviously something behind the scenes that's going on that he's either made it known that he wants to leave or he's unhappy. And Posse Coggles stepped in and says, Well, do you know what? See if you're unhappy, cheerio. Yeah. A any um any thoughts on St. Mirren? 
providing the shock, Ruffy? No, 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 I think, no. I think teams now have got to go to Parkhead and they've got to make they've got to make their mind up. The manager's got to make the mind up whether they sit in mm. and, and try and make it as hard as possible for Celtic to break them down. Yeah. Or they open up and they go and make a game. If they go and make a game, they're going to lose goals, as we saw mm. with St Johnson uh, last week and most other teams that go to Parkhead. So it'll be interesting to see how they set their stall out. I, I can't see anybody stopping them, and I keep repeating myself. If Celtic are going into games at Parkhead with 80% possession of the ball, the other team's not going to win. Mm. Yeah. OK, I've, I've got Celtic, I've got Wraith Rovers to take Motherwell out, I've got Livingston to beat Inverness, Cali Thistle, Dundee United, Kilmarnock, what did you say? Dundee United. Dundee United. Um, as well. Yep, I think we'll go. I'll go Dundee United. Air United against Elgin. I'm going to go Air United. Yeah, I think Air United are on a good run just now. Yeah, oh. and what about the Friday? Hamilton against Hearts. <laughs> I turned it around a wee bit, you know. I mean, so hearts then for you, yeah. No, let me finish. Here let me get there. Let why me get why there. Why do you want to waste ninety seconds of the show? I'm making a point that they're going to be <laughs> they're going to be harder to beat than what they would have been a month ago. Yeah, I agree. I think John Rankin, uh, they're very difficult. If you let them score, they're, they're organised enough to see the game out. And they've got a point. They're in a final where I didn't think they would ever no, be in a final no. a month ago. Yeah. But Hearts have still got the, the strength and depth, and they should go there and win. But it it won't be a, a given, you know, easy three or four or nothing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go Hearts by three no, minimum. I think Hearts will win comfortably. I think. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, things that go against Hearts probably pitch. What kind of night it is? What kind of game Hamilton play? I think Hamilton will get bits of quality as well. I think Lewis Smith's a good player. Uh, it scored the other night, and they've got they've got young boys coming through. But I think Hearts, the armoury that Hearts have at their disposal, you know, just to even to freshen it up here yeah. and, and shove through. I mean, it's like Celtic and Sata against St Mirren. I mean, the bad news for St Mirren might be that the Celtic do freshen up and they'll, they'll be bringing in people who have got a case to make. You know, they might, I don't know if it starts all, but he probably starts somebody like Turnbull, etc, uh, etc. Et and you go, well, Kobayashi, maybe, if, you know, etc. Yeah. And, and these guys are coming and saying, this is your chance, you know, this yeah. isn't it. So it's something, it's a double-edged sword for St. Mirna and for Hearts, but I think Hearts will, I agree, I think Hearts will be comfortable winners. Yeah, I think it could be a long afternoon for Partick Thistle at Ibrox. Um, I, I, I'm, if we're talking about how he's going to set his stall out, I think Rangers are still grinding them out, even when sometimes, as some Rangers fans have said to me, the Ross County wasn't great to watch, still winning. Still winning, that's it. I mean, his, what, what his, his record is... Uh, uh, impeccable apart from the, the minor blemish of a draw against Celtic um, yeah I, I don't see th I mean Thistle's form as well is not great at the moment lost to, lost to Hamilton then lose to Cove uh, that's that, 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 that is not good form to take to, to uh, Ibrox just out of curiosity if he doesn't get them to the playoffs is he under pressure? No, I think I think he will get them to the playoffs, and I don't think he's under pressure. I'm not privy now to what happens within Partick Thistle. They may be the new board, might be more volatile than the old board was. But the old board was a, a board that stuck with managers. You remember the the Gary Caldwell? He was under a lot of pressure before the board got. And I think if you're looking at, I think he will get to the playoffs, and then he can look to saying he, he, you know, they had a, a decent league cup run, and this isn't a too bad a, a cup run. No, I don't, I don't see, I don't see him under pressure at the moment, Peter. Yeah. No. we used to get a great insight into Partick Thistle, but uh, well, we got, we, I wouldn't say a great insight. We got an insight. Yeah, well, like, the, I'm less sober up here. Like kind of a yo-yo director, wasn't it? He, he, he was, was like, in, okay, and, out, he was in, in and, out, and out. Yeah, shaking it all about. Yeah, and sometimes the good stuff he wouldn't tell you anyway. And now that you're not in. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell us the Rangers are going to tonk Thistle. I think they'll win by three. Well, although Thistle are getting the results, <laughs> you know, I think defensively we've got the best defence in the championship. Yeah. You know, I think the two boys, the big Kevin Holt at the back, you know, I think uh, very strong, you know, good defensively. If you look at the record, they don't lose goals very easily. It's up front. Brian Graham's in and out just now. Anton Downs is injured. You know, wee boy Mullins not scoring. No, I would like them to go there and, and, and show what they can do. And I'm sure as a football inside on their game, you know, they're, they're good to watch. You know, and I, I wouldn't like, I don't think Collie will sit in. You know, I don't yeah. think he'll spoil the game. I think he'll try and entertain because he said on numerous occasions, we've got good players. Mm -hmm. The boy Turner on midfield, they're all good players. Mm -hmm. it be interesting to see if the Cole McKinnon plays. I hope Rangers allow him to play. Yeah. You know, he's a Rangers player. But I hope they allow the young boy to play to show what he can do. Okay, um, Monday, 
Davil, some of the players have said it's a tougher game this time around against Falkirk mm -hmm. than against Aberdeen. Um, maybe a wee bit tongue in cheek there, but nevertheless, I think John Gall will be hoping that they can just extend the dream for another round, can they? They've got a chance, <coughs> haven't they? Yeah. Got a chance. I don't think they will. I think that is a tougher game for them. Uh, and I don't say that tongue in cheek. I just think the circumstances surrounding Aberdeen going there. It was like alarm bells all over the shop. You I mean before they were going down? I mean even Aberdeen, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, certainly before the World Cup, you would have thought <coughs> they're just not going to lose. But there was, you know, there was alarm bells about Aberdeen at the time. I don't think there's alarm bells about Falkirk. I think Falkirk a couple of divisions up for them. Falkirk decent form, very good manager. I think what you know, really strong, tactically astute manager. Uh, I think it'll be a tight game, Peter. Uh, um, this would be the one where you would go. And, I think folk will win narrowly, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not hugely confident about that. Yeah, OK. Well, given it a uh, Ruffy, what did you think? Same as you. I think it'll be very narrow. I think the whole of Darvo will be buzzing. I think the players in the dressing room will be buzzing. Obviously, the manager will come up with another team talk that will get them motivated. I think it'll be really, really tight, but I think at the end of the day, folk will come away. OK, uh, we're going to talk European Super League shortly. We're also going to talk um, about Alan Burrows and uh, Motherwell have released as a statement very shortly as well. Um, yesterday, we really got a great topic going on the basis of with the books that we're giving away, the history of the Celtic shirt, the history of the Rangers shirt, we thought to ourselves, well, here's the, the top 10 Rangers players. And it's certainly got a lot of people talking, Ruffy. I, I think, if anything, a lot of Rangers fans were looking and thinking to themselves, well, uh, you know, maybe the goalie uh, should have been in that top 10, but it's a hard call because you've got George Young, who's, a, you know, who was a, an absolute legend for Rangers. Some people said Dave Meikle John. Some yeah. people, you know, were mentioning uh, players that should have been uh, in that top 10, but we come up with 10, didn't have a goalie in it. Maybe a lot of them said maybe Andy Gorham. Yeah, well, my problem was the two. My problem was Andy Gorham and Barry Ferguson. But my other problem was, what two do I leave out? Do I leave out Gascoigne? Do I leave out Loudrop? And that's that's a difficult one to judge, you know. But yeah. certainly, I, I definitely would have had Barry Ferguson in it. Yeah, I, I had Gascoigne ahead of Loudrop in the running order, 10 to 1. I don't know if you... I would disagree with that because, oh, right, yeah, yeah. I think not because of any, I just think for the contributions to Rangers, I think Loudrop was a better player for Rangers than Gascoigne was. Yeah. Gascoigne was more than decent. But, uh, yeah, I would, I thought, uh, I think in modern times, Loudrop for me would be the outstanding player in modern times yeah. uh, for Rangers. Here's a question then on the back of it, because it's all about opinions and some people agreed, some people didn't on here. I, I think Gascoigne at one point was world class. I don't think. Brian Loudrop was I'd a agree with that. I'd agree with that. Yeah. I, I would think that Gascoigne overall, uh, with his talents, was a better player than, than, than Loudrop. I'm just talking about the Rangers' contribution. Yeah. I mean, I, I put Gascoigne as high as, if you talk about English midfielders I've ever seen and, and they go back, I'm going back to Bobby Charlton, you yeah. know. Gascoigne's in the argument. Yeah. They, that's how good Gascoigne is. You know, Gascoigne's there with, you know, Brian Robson's. Uh, Charlton's yep. Hoddles different you know what I mean yeah. uh, you know I put I rate Gas Gasoline going was, and he did it at Rangers Gascoigne's the kind of player that would just decide to win a match and win it yeah on that basis we decided today to come up with <laughs> the top 10 greatest ever <laughs> Celtic players well, and I have to tell you I get the feeling now here's my here's just you know moment. if Bobby Murdoch's not in it I walk out the door <laughs> No, my, okay, I know that, but my point here is you. I think there might be one that you say shouldn't be there, uh -huh. and you might offer an alternative to it, and then I think you might disagree with the order that I've chosen today. Uh, yeah, but we're going to, I mean, I'm not going to have the great same order. Okay, Come on. here we go with the top ten. Here are PLZ Soccer's top 10 Celtic players we would love to hear yours. And at 10th spot, midfielder Paul McStay. He spent 16 years at Celtic, winning three league titles, four Scottish Cups and one League Cup. Ninth place goes to Danny McGrain. By the mid-70s, McGrain was considered by many as one of the best fullbacks in the world. He captained the club to three league championships, two Scottish Cups and one League Cup. At number eight, Bertie Auld. Auld served the club on two occasions. He became a key part of Celtic winning nine league titles as well as the European Cup in 1967. Number seven goes to Tommy Gemmell. Gemmell made 418 appearances for Celtic, scoring 63 goals. His most famous goal was to put Celtic ahead in the European Cup final against Inter Milan. And at number six, 
6, Bobby Lennox. He won 11 League medals, 8 Scottish Cup medals and 5 League Cup medals. Lennox also played in the European Cup final and was the last Lisbon Lion to retire. Our number 5 spot goes to Bobby Murdoch. In total, Murdoch made over 500 appearances for Celtic, scoring approximately 100 goals. And at number 4, Sir Kenny Leglish. During his career, he made 320 appearances for Celtic, scoring 167 goals. In 1977, Douglas signed for Liverpool for a British record fee, much to the disbelief of Celtic fans. Moving into our top three, and at the number three spot, Henrik Larsson. Referred to as the King of Kings by Celtic fans, in his seven-year spell at the club, he won four league titles, two Scottish League Cups and two Scottish Cups. He was the top goalscorer for five out of the six seasons that he competed in. And our runner-up, Jimmy Johnston. Johnston was part of the European Cup winning team. He also won nine consecutive Scottish Championships, scoring 129 goals for the side and was voted the club's greatest ever player in 2002. And in at number one, Billy McNeil. McNeil was signed by Jock Steen in 1957 for £250. With McNeil as Celtic captain, the club were in their most successful period. They dominated Scottish football and regularly competed in the latter stages of European football. That's our top 10 Celtic players. Let us know what yours are in the comment section below. What do you think? I think it's a good strong list. I think you've got to look at the, the criterion for this. If you're talking about just in terms of sheer player quality, if you're talking about in terms of sheer player quality, Billy McNeil is no number one, you know, because there's better players in that list than Billy. Yes. If you're talking about him as his contribution to the club, I would say he's number one because he was uh, the the captain of the uh, the greatest ever side and the, the greatest period of domination. He also came back and he won... Uh, in almost fairy tale style, the the, the centenary double, yeah. and he was the greatest ambassador any club could ever hold for. So, no, but um, if you're talking about players, I think should be in there. It's before your time and all that, and even before my time. Although Jimmy McGrory, McGrory's got to be in. Uh, um, um, I think McGrory is. If you look at his record, if you look at his goals for and again, you know the goals that he scored uh, against the games he played in. Yeah, he was just a phenomenon. Um, you could. Who do you take out? Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's such a then, tough call, isn't it? Uh, it's, a, it's a tough call. Who would I take out that ten to get McGrory and Goodness. I, I was thinking McStay. I think. See, I think McStay has been funnily has been underrated because of the team he played in. Yeah. If you look more than more, and you'll see it on on, on YouTube and and, and and Twitter now. There'll be there'll be. Uh, Kind of clips come up of McStay playing, and let's be honest, not great Celtic teams, yeah, and doing really great things. Oh, absolutely, you know, doing I mean, great, it, it, great passing. When they said his ankles had gone, I actually thought his back would have gone first. Oh, that swivel, eh? Oh, with carrying. Oh, many quite, many aye, yeah, sides. Many trace, I, I mean, you know, yeah. and and another thing in the list there. I mean, for me, the. I mean, I'm a great Bobby Murdoch fan, but I think the best Celtic player ever was Kenny Dalglish. He would be my number one. He'd be ahead of Larson. Yeah. Yeah, what are you going to say about that? <laughs> See, yeah. he, he, people out there will be yeah. stunned. You go have my way down well, there. I've got, a, I've, I've got, I've got Kenny at number four. I mean, if we're talking about the criteria, which you rightly points out, if you're talking about the greatest player, who's the best, the most talented, for me, Douglas is number one. Or, and I have to be honest about this, Hugh. This is the way. This is the way it goes. Um, Douglas sustainability for a long career longevity at the highest level he was absolutely top drawer but I think Jimmy Johnson might have been 22 years of age mm. and he was a phenomenon Jimmy I'm, Johnston I'm, if he had the right attitude Jimmy Johnson could have been Jimmy Johnson could have been elsewhere yeah another thing about Kenny as well is like you know Kenny is a great at two clubs you know he's the greatest yeah. player ever at Liverpool I think mm. he's the greatest player ever at Celtic so that dilutes his appeal you know when you're, when you're doing that I, I can see that yeah. it's just a fast I'm really interested to see Bobby Lennox in it because I, I, I always think feel he's underrated as well well if it wasn't for Henrik Larsson Bobby Lennox was the biggest post-war goal scorer yeah and look he's Hall as well it's, it's Hall, incredible and his longevity as well and Bobby Bobby could play anywhere across what is now called the front three. Yeah, you it's a great Rangers and Celtic argument, isn't oh, it? But I, mean, I, mean, that's, I mean, you could, I would never, see, there's some lists that will come out and you say, no, nah, that's just daft. That's yeah. just stupid. I'm not dealing with that. There was one about Celtic not that long ago. I just said, no, nah, it's just daft. That's not, your list is, is a good, strong, arguable list. I'll have tweaks with it. Yeah. But yeah. that's where we should have tweaks with otherwise we'd be the same person. But can I tell you something, Hugh? I'm, I'm going to do the top 10 Aberdeen <laughs> of all time, which is tough. 
I'm going to do the well. It's tough on the basis that anybody out with Fergie's time is going to struggle to get in it. Um, yeah, but I would say Martin Buchan, yeah, would Joe Harper, Joe, maybe. Joe Bob, and another one. He's a left field one. One of the greatest players I ever saw in Scottish football, Zoltan Varga. But he's only here for no. I know five but, but a lot of Aberdeen fans uh, oh, remember sorry, him with great that, affection. Uh, uh, so the, I'm going to do an Aberdeen one. The one that I think is going mm. to be the toughest one to do, Ruffy, is Hearts. Hibs. I've got oh, the nucleus uh, of it. Hearts, I think I'm on a real hiding to nothing with it because well, there's so many difficult ones. You yeah, can. The, the Hibs one, I'm more than happy to be 10th in that one. You know, don't move, move me up any <laughs> higher than that. You know? <laughs> I don't deserve to be up yeah, uh, with that thing. Too high. I think the Hibs one would be a difficult one. I played with Pat, you know, and a wee rookie was there and you've got Alec Edwards and you've got Gordon. You've you got the famous yeah, five. Your famous five, yeah. But that, that we, we keep talking about an era thing and that, that Celtic one epitomised that because we've not got Jimmy McGrory in it mm -hmm. what I was going to say I'd be interested to in see if it, some of the older guys who we haven't put Jimmy McGrory in is there any other players around well, about that era yeah. definitely like, like well, Bobby Evans and, no, Liam, I mean do we Willie Fernley we never we seen him you know. Liam Byrne has just said Charlie Tully right? yeah you because know? It's, yeah. We've, moved, we've moved into a, a more modern era because we even, never saw these players even going right back to the beginning of the last century Jimmy Quinn Patsy Gallagher yeah. I mean it's very hard to make judgments on these players though. Stephen Pollock says Luba Mravchik has to be in the best ever Celtic players and you're saying to yourself, you know... He's just, he wouldn't be for me. No, he wouldn't be for me, but... You know, ah, it's, it's he's a, a good he, call. He's huh? a really good... He's, a, mm -hmm. he's certainly in the top 50, isn't no, he? Oh, aye. But I mean, this is where... It, I mean, that's... You'll get daft shouts. You know, people say, oh, he should be in it. That's not a daft shout. That's just a shout I disagree with, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, listen, it's great. It's subjective. Sometimes it's time-sensitive to your generation. Exactly. People you, you saw. I left myself wide open uh, for some of the elder uh, statesmen who watch this programme who would say, listen, you don't put Jimmy McGrory in. There are some who look at the Rangers uh, and go back and say... There's a lot of players that well, you've you missed. Got, we Alan Morton, the the Morton, wee boy Diddle, Doddle, yep. Waddle. Yep. I mean, one of the greats. Uh, you can... It, <laughs> Jimmy Millers and Ralph Brands are very high for... There's a lot of recency stuff as well. If you talk to people, players of certain generations now, they'll go, you know, say Rangers go Larson, uh, Celtic Larson, Rangers Loudrop. Yeah. And they'll be really... Cause, because people... They were part of people's lives. Yeah. People watched them in a sad, etc. Et Which cetera. is why I pushed for Derek Johnson in it. I think Derek Johnson was a was for for me. Um, you know, I, I think he was. A, I think he was a better player than Mark Haley. Yeah, and Haley was a good player. And Haley was a great player. See, I think yeah. people forget how good Johnson was because Johnson's versatility may have gone in the way of him. Derek Johnson could play as an out and out centre half. He could play as a sweeper. He could play as an out-and-out centre-forward. He could play behind a centre-forward. Johnston was a very good football player. Yeah, Hugh Scott, who always likes to chip in, is, I think Hugh's a Rangers fan and, and uh, obviously offers uh, some good informed comments, says Peter Abbott of Davy Cooper above uh, both Gascoigne and Loudrop in the Rangers' top ten. Subjective, mm -hmm. it's one that we disagree on, um, you know, but uh, that's the great uh, thing about these, um, you know, it's a great pub chat, isn't it, Ruffy? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Once you get into the Partick Thistle team, that'll be interesting. That's going to be an absolute yeah. belter, isn't it? Um, anyway, uh, we'll be talking about the greatest ever hearts, which I think I'm going to have to spend a fair bit of time on and phone a few mm. people. Um, and the greatest ever hibs, we'll do Motherwell, we'll go right round uh, some of the teams and see in the Scottish Premiership if we can come up with the greatest. I'm really looking forward to doing the Aberdeen one as well. And that brings me nicely to that statement that Motherwell have released this morning at 8 o'clock, no less. Once it comes up as a wee notification, you're thinking to yourself, statement. And this is what the uh, chairman, Jim McMahon, had to say about the departure of Alan Burrows. Following the announcement of Alan's departure as CEO last month, several clubs made contact with him about a potential new role. Alan ultimately decided to take up an offer from Aberdeen. Uh, we all very much wish him well with that. However, in order to be fair to all parties, including Motherwell, uh, and to stop any potential awkwardness or issues, it was agreed to expedite that exit process. It's been a tough time of late for the club. Uh, of that, there is no doubt. And I want to thank you all for your patience, understanding and backing. We will get through this and back to better days, particularly if we all stick together. Um, because there may well have been a collective of reasons why 
Alan eventually decided, you know, I need a change. And we all back him for that and say, great, you did, you, I think you can leave Fir Park with your mm. head held high. Motherwell's loss is almost certainly, for me, Aberdeen's gain. Yep, and I'd agree with that. And I'd agree that it's, uh, it makes great business sense to, as well to, as they put it, expedite the process. Because I think if you're within a club and you're going to another club, there's enough of noise about that. You know, from fans, it's better than mm -hmm. when the club is not doing well from fans and outside just to say, right, let's make it a clean break and let's all move on. <laughs> so I think it's not only a very dignified statement, but it's a very correct one. Yeah, absolutely. And they now have to try and get someone to come in and replace them. And, you know, in a very short space of time, entering a club that's really at the moment got a manager in Stephen Hamill who is... He probably utilising every aspect of it, the experience that he has to try and come up with a plan to get them out of the mess they're in. Yeah, so that's why the next person that comes in, I don't know whether he needs to know something about the club, but he certainly needs to get the support uh, on board because the support seemed to be turning a wee bit, you know, just because of the, the results that he's got. I don't think the manager's, you know, strong... Uh, to hold on to that job as he was maybe mm -hmm. when he went in there because of what he'd done at the club. But it'd be interesting to see who it is. There, there, there will be somebody out there who's doing well at another club. I don't know what club that would be. They might just have to headhunt somebody. But it needs to be somebody that comes in and gets things sorted out right away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we wish Alan well, as we have mentioned on uh, more than a few occasions. Um, we've got, uh, the competition is still to come and the answer to the quiz as well. Um, but something that caught my eye uh, today was the European Super League. Uh, the plans have been resurrected. And here's the basic points of uh, this Super League suggestion. Uh, of course, no permanent member teams. Multi-divisional format could include between 60 to 80 sides. Each team would play a minimum of 14 games. And of course, as you can see there, uh, you know, it's really driven by the likes of Real Madrid, Barcelona, Juventus. They just will not let it go. And the reason I think they're the main driving force for this is because financially right now, they are up against it. Yeah, because the whole fight of is we've got a European Super League at the moment. And it's called the English Premier League. Yeah. And that's the fact of the matter. Yep, and they're, they're looking out in that and they're going, wait a wee minute. Seeing they've watched what's happened to Benfica, to Celtic, to Ajax, because they've been deprived of of uh, of extracurricular funds, uh, and they're saying to themselves, if we don't react to this quickly, we could become bystanders because the EPL could become like football's NFL. It has almost a, a, already. I mean the. the you look. You only have to look at the the, the transfer window there. The, the billion spent by English clubs in the transfer absolutely dwarfing even the top five leagues put together. Yeah. And they see the way things are going, and they're saying to themselves, "Listen, we have to go another way." And I think <laughs> when it comes push comes to crunch, I think they'll say, "Well, you're either with us or you're against us," because they have to recalibrate in, uh, the the. Uh, the European clubs. But those teams are really at the forefront of it because it's not a case of saying, OK, and I think all of Europe, including Scotland, is looking on at England. England has created such a huge imbalance that I think, you know, over the next few years, it's going to be very, very difficult for any team to try and wrestle the Champions League away from them. Yep. Europa League, Conference League as well, they'll mm. all be in there. I mentioned this five years ago, Hugh, that I thought it was a huge problem coming. They just signed that Chinese deal for a billion, mm -hmm. which eventually collapsed. Mm. But they've gone out and they've they've got an American deal, which has kicked in, which again opens up that market mm. to them. The appeal is there for everyone. And the European clubs, yes, they're worried. But those three clubs are worried because they've gone beyond that. Now, Barcelona have sold the crown jewels. They are selling TV rights 25, 50, 50 years ahead. Exactly. And, and the other thing as well is, you look at the, the top competition in the world, certainly top club competition in the world is the Champions League. If you take the English clubs out of it, put them to a side, how many teams can win the Champions League? And you see so Real Madrid, Barcelona, Ma maybe Munich won it, won it recently. And then... Paris, they've not won it, but they probably could. And then you might get the outlier every now and again. I think Napoli will do well this year. Yeah, That's just, that's just talking about four clubs, five yeah. clubs. 
And you, you could you could off the top of your head see four or five English clubs who would have the chance of winning the Champions League. You yeah, know, of the four or five English clubs that have a chance of winning it, you have a you have a club who are now under investigation yep. who've spent over a billion <laughs> and I've got nowhere near it. They haven't won it. Yep, but the, but it's not been for lack of money. No, there's been there's been other reasons behind it. I think I think the, you know the what it's almost an existential threat to these clubs now. If you're looking at Real Madrid and Barcelona, who have you know been at the top of it, certainly Barcelona in the 21st century, but Real Madrid since 1955 have been at the top. They are the you know the top club in the world. And if Real Madrid are sitting there thinking, do you know what? Like you know, can you know over time will be be able to compete with English clubs? Well, they won't, no doubt. Yeah. Really. Just look at the the recent Champions League record. But are we going to be you know? They've got to act now. Yeah, but but because because of this constant drive uh, and the competitive nature now financially in the English Premier League, e even if you're selling a club, Hugh, the only people who can buy a Manchester United, you know, is an individual multi-millionaire who might not even get a sniff at it, and you know, the Emir of Qatar. Uh, uh, Qatar, uh, sorry. Uh, I mean, that is mental. Well, you're talking about they're talking about they won't countenance four billion so it's going to be I would think upwards of six billion pounds six billion yeah. to buy Manchester United so you're talking about big potatoes but the 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 way a lot of here's the theory in the European Super League the theory is if you get all the top clubs together get a franchise where's the market and where's the money the money might be there's more money in South America and television deals if we can get over there but the big market India and one of the things I found incredible at the World Cup was the amount of Indian football supporters over there yeah. and talking to them, going to games and that. And they were really football tourists. They were just saying, oh, we get captivated by the, the English Premier League, so we're just here to watch football. Yeah. And that's a burgeoning economy with hundreds of millions, yeah. hundreds of millions of potential subscribers. Would you like to see the Super League happen? Uh, I think the Super League, I would like to see a European Super League uh, very much because I think it kicks in, it will dribble down to Scottish football and it will make Scottish football a more competitive and make Scottish football a more attractive thing because I think the bigger clubs can go up and find their level and the lower clubs will be able to find a level as well. And are you talking about the Super League prompting the departure of Celtic and Rangers from yeah, Scottish football? Yeah, especially when they're talking about... Uh, once they start talking about 60 to 80 clubs, that's who they're talking about, isn't yeah. it? I mean, they're that, talking about Benfica's that, Porto. That's what I would like to see, Rafi. If only for the fact... I'm not a big fan of the, this whole thing being pushed on the basis that we're skint, we need yeah. the money. Um, um, I, I, I am looking at it and saying if there is a European Super League, great, because... Take Celtic and Rangers out of the equation here and somehow we get back to a competitive game because I don't see the value in Celtic and Rangers just constantly tit for tat every mm. year now. The, the days of a Sir Alex Ferguson with an Aberdeen are long gone. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, we've, we've saw Rangers and Celtic try to compete in the Champions League and they just don't have the, the power with the money behind them. They, you see some of the, the teams are playing it, some of the, the teams in, in Europe, you know, that every time... Celtic Rangers play them and there are no big names and they get beat mm -hmm. they say we can't compete with them and they're just wee, wee teams backed mm -hmm. by an oil billionaire or, or mm -hmm. like would you call them Salzburg Red mm -hmm. Bull yeah. they're back. these teams have all got the finance and we all know what it's like if Rangers and Celtic get to the, the group stages of the Champions League we're all sitting up Mm -hmm. going wow now imagine the two of them were in mm -hmm. a top European league it'd be fantastic but the other thing as well is look as the way we are if, if Celtic and, and, and Rangers drop I'm not talking about getting beat drop points look at the press conference imagine if, uh, if Ross County had drawn at Ibrox last Saturday but you know it would be days of, over a draw yeah. I mean that's, that's the difference and you can't that I don't think that can continue indefinitely. I don't even think it's entertaining, but some fans, it's, some fans are happy with the diet of this. No, but I, I, I think, I think, I think that, you know, once they look beyond it, they'll say to themselves, no, there's going to be a recalibration again. I think one of the things that's been really good Scottish football, and there's a lot of problems with it, is the pyramid system. I think the pyramid system is not perfect because of the, the obstacles put in the way of lower, lower clubs. But 
what it has done is released a huge amount of energy in Scottish football. Clubs can like Darvel or Och and Lech or Trenent, where I was the other week there. Bonnie Rigros. Yeah. Bonnie Rigros have gone up, yeah. Cove. They can say, well, we, 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 can, we can find our level <clears> now. Um, uh, and, and I think that's really positive and energetic for the fans. And I would love... I would love the fact that you know that you know that the, the, the European football recalibrated and everybody could be aspirational, could go and find their level. Yeah. Would you yeah like if, to? If, if Rangers and Celtic went into the, this this big European, they would still have sufficient of course. players to play in their league. Uh, no, it might be a bit more competitive for everybody else, but yeah. they would still have enough quality players to make the league competitive enough mm. yeah but then it, I mean if, they allow, if they're allowed that then it's unbelievably greedy you give them the European money yeah or you, you say them to them you say to them the way they do the lone league listen if you want to play teams in this you can't win it absolutely <laughs> um, anyway it's interesting stuff would you like to see a European Super League do you like this to gather a bit of pace thanks to so many of you who've joined in with the uh, greatest ever players Rangers or Celtic we'll throw out a few greatest ever teams for uh, some of the other Scottish Premiership sides as well it's always a good pub argument it's always a good debate if we miss somebody it's subjective um, and thank you to so many of you for offering your opinion on that. Don't forget, and I very rarely say it now because 99% of the, the, the people who are joining us now are thoroughly decent people. If you can't conduct yourself properly on our feed, we do try and ban as many of the uh, people who are just there um, just basically to annoy other people and, uh, you know, put themselves in the gutter with some of their comments so we try and um, ban as many of them as possible and apologies to anyone who is offended by some of the people who really this is not the show for you it's the only way I, I can say it's a great catchphrase and it's going to be a great t-shirt Ruffy um, what about the answer to the quiz Hugh provide us with it the but question was which is the only trophy Lionel Messi has competed in and not won French Cup that's exactly it. The French Cup knocked out last, last night. night yeah. So uh, that was the answer we were looking for. What about the competition? Still time to get involved. This is your chance to win one of these fantastic books that looks back at the classic shirts throughout both clubs' history. You can read about your favourite shirt and your favourite season as a Celtic or Rangers supporter. To be in with a chance of winning, all you have to do is tell us which book you would like to win in the comment section below. And to double your chances of winning, hit the subscribe button and join us on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Good luck. Uh, thanks to Dan who says I'd like to win the Hibs book when it comes out Dan uh, we'll get it as a competition I promise you um, which is that we'll have the first sponsor on it as well the Hibs shirt it was the first sponsor so yeah. wasn't it Bukta. 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 Bukta yeah good point actually Hugh uh, yeah I just hope somebody's got seven years of their life to dedicate to it for the previous <laughs> trip um, uh, thanks to 1888 who says no freedom of speech on this channel yes there is 1888 there is freedom of speech just not in the gutter with profanities and of course this constant bickering with nutcases about who's dead, who's not. Um, we, we tend to just uh, refrain from talking about all that and talk about football. So there is freedom of speech. We just try and eradicate some of the loonies mm -hmm. who um, just... Uh, keep Ruffy in. But uh, mm -hmm. Keep Ruffy in. Am I in the... Yeah, yeah, as, no. as, as we leave the programme, Ruffy, no. am I in the wrong for pleading to the decency of the normal yeah. people who are on here? Because we all know social media yeah. has given a platform oh, to goodness. people who you would never hang about with in normal life. Yeah, I think you're perfectly right, but I thought Tom McNamara put, put himself in it yesterday when Peter uh, put out the, the question of you can wear the Rangers of the Celtic book with no question to win it, mm. and Tom just announced to say that's for all the idiots out there. Yeah, all the thick people, <laughs> yeah, which uh, at the end of the day, we embrace... A career in, a career in, a career in diplomacy yeah, was... Uh, we, we, we accept everybody, race, um, creed, colour, your football team, and of course your intellect, it doesn't matter to you right. as long as you don't abuse people. Exactly. And that is the only rule we have. Be decent uh, and enjoy your club and offer us an opinion. Um, but try not to annoy people on there who are just on to watch uh, a football show and talk about their team. And, you know, uh, it's the only thing that we actually have as our criteria because it's unbiased, uncensored, unmatched. But of course, hopefully, if you join the football family, you'll know how to conduct yourself. Uh, from an old fuddy-duddy, um, I'm talking about myself, from Peter, <laughs> Hugh and Ruffy, thank you for watching. <laughs>